Welcome everybody. As we're waiting for a few more people to show up, there's some directions on the screen. We'll have about five minutes to gather some of those things and then um, we'll get started. Welcome everyone. We're going to get started in a few minutes. There's some directions on your screen to get a few supplies if they're handy or nearby. Welcome everyone. We're going to get started in a few minutes. There's some directions on the screen of a few supplies that you can get um, while you're waiting and we'll start in just a couple of minutes. Can you hear us, Mari? I can hear you, although I'm going to mute you for the most part. Yeah. So that we don't talk on top of each other. Hi, Gary. It's nice to see a familiar face. Yeah, good to see you. I'm doing adventure with uh, Charlie and Seb, who are six and four, every day at one o'clock Eastern time. <laughs> All right. Maybe some of these things will give you some good ideas. Hopefully, yeah. It's hardly adventure therapy, but anyway. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm getting the sound fixed. I thought maybe I was just off. I'm going to mute myself now, but it's great to see you guys. Hello, Tuesday. Hi, Gary. <laughs> I'll mute myself too. Uh, I don't know how to mute myself. Lower left hand <laughs> corner, hit the mute button. I muted you, Gary. Oh. <laughs> Hey, Maury. 
Hey, I see a couple of people still logging in, so we're going to give people a, a, maybe two more minutes on the screen. You should see some directions, some items to pick up if you want to play along with some of these activities. Hey Mari, I'm just just letting you just letting you know that I need to leave about ten minutes early because I have another call at one. So oh. it's not because I'm not interested. I just wanted you to know that's why I got to hop off. Thanks, Gary. All right. So I've just launched a poll. It should come up on your screen. You can answer that. So polls are one of the virtual things that you can do mostly with groups. Um, I have tried a poll with an individual. Rating scales, I suppose, work. All right, we have almost everyone that's voted as well, too. I'm going to end the poll, share the results. You can see that, according to our quick poll, um, most people work with adolescents. And then a lot of individuals and groups. So I'll keep that in mind as I'm sharing some of the activities for today. So I'm going to move back so that you can see me. Yay. <laughs> adjust this just a little bit. Whew, so it's so good to see all of you here today. I didn't anticipate quite the audience, but I'm excited to have this big of audience. Um, these are, are certainly some unique in uncertain times that we're in. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mari Lung. I'm a licensed mental health counselor and a licensed marriage family therapist. And I've been doing counseling since the late 90s and adventure work since the late 80s, so quite some time. For those of us that do primarily experiential adventure work, we're really used to um, being outside or having the shared experience with the client or even when we're inside with our clients, we're doing activities, but it's truly that shared experience. And although I've done a few things virtually over the years, primarily in classes that I've taught, it is a really different experience. So the last week and a half, as I've been doing telehealth with my clients, I've been experimenting with how to do some of these activities, either over the phone or online. So my intention today is just to share a variety of these activities with you that I've tested out and for you to adapt them however it is that you find helpful. After this call, and give me a couple of days, I will write up brief instructions for any of the activities that I demonstrated or talked about and then email them out to whoever was on this call. 
keep in mind that this workshop is not about any of the legal aspects. I'm assuming that you've already taken care of that, that you have telehealth consent, that you've gotten a BA agreement with Google, or that you're using encrypted um, software, you know, all of that is all taken care of. If any of that is like, I have no idea what Mari's is talking about. If you Google that, there are tons of free resources right now for mental health counselors about some of the legal aspects on it. So take, take that and set that aside. What we're really focusing on is once you're actually connected and you're online, now what? What I find and what I'm finding is that most of our activities don't actually require a lot of adaptation. What requires adaptation is me, is how am I limiting myself in this experience? And, and then just some of the awkwardness of being online and not having that person right in front of me. So for some of my clients, having that video call is really helpful so that I can see them and see some of their nonverbal movements or particularly for some of my clients with high anxiety that are starting to think about what are you thinking about and doing that mind reading, having them um, being able to see me is really important. For others of my clients, that awkwardness of being on a screen, like it's this performance anxiety thing that happens, overwhelms our sessions. And so for those sessions, I've been using a phone and just doing talk sessions instead of the video. And of course, it's something that we can work towards and play with a little bit, and maybe we can mix and match the two. Um, but I am finding that just the technology itself is part of our therapeutic conversation. With people on the phone, um, we still can do walking sessions. I can walk outside, they can walk outside, we can have a walking session and just be outside. A caveat, I tried to do a Zoom call walking outside where I could see the person and I walked into a tree <laughs> during the call. So just note you're being aware of the surroundings that you're in. Um, the other piece that there are some supplies and things to do. So I posted some of the supplies in advance. Sometimes I just do that at the beginning of the mic call. Sometimes I message my clients and say, hey, have these supplies. And I try to use relatively familiar supplies. Um, if I'm working with kids, they're more likely to have Play-Doh or Legos than adults. But there's a variety of things that you can send ahead of time or have them get ahead of time. Um, one of the things that I've done is also send like the supplies in three different groupings, like supply A, supply B list, supply C list, and let my clients select the supplies, which then selected the activity. So that was kind of interesting and fascinating to see like how did that influence our experience. So with that being said, I saw someone chat, so I'm just double checking that they're not saying like, we have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Um, so I am finding that a lot of the adults that I work with do have a lot of online experience with video calls from work or from schools, um, and they do these team building kinds of things. So there's tons of that stuff out there. So for some of my adult clients, starting with something that was familiar, like a scavenger hunt or doing a Google Doc share, you can do a genogram online or cooperative drawing, um, they've already used that, or helping them to get connected with apps like Calm or shine headspace by the way headspace is free to mental health people right now so if you google that you can get the code and request headspace um, having that technology as backup they've already done together YouTube videos together so I might um, do YouTube of Brene Brown or whatever your favorite one is you can watch that together and then discuss it um, and even some of the online tours the museums and national parks are doing the online tour so you just share the screen and you could do some of the tour as if you were walking outside all of those already kind of super familiar to adults I don't know that I ex it, think about that as much as experiential therapy but it does shift up your talk therapy pieces a little bit of course you can do the polling which you saw me do earlier I find that keeping the same structure that I typically do in session has been really helpful on Zoom, but I almost have to set it up again with my clients. So the idea of a check-in, a gathering activity, our main activity, um, and then a closing. So we keep that same pattern that I keep in my sessions. So I do start off with the check-ins. Again, a lot of the check-ins don't need any adaptation. The metaphor check-in of a weather report, you know, what is your weather report for you right now, for you personally, not like what's outside? What do you anticipate the weather report to be like in the afternoon? And then talk about that. 
or a car part. If you were a car part right now, what car part would you be? And so those metaphoric um, check-ins, no adaptation needed. I do like the pipe cleaner check-in. Not everybody has pipe cleaners, but if you have kids, you have, they, they're likely to have pipe cleaners around. So there's a variety of things. First of all, I just like pipe cleaners because it allows my kids to um, fidget while they're talking to me, adolescents as well. I might say with this pipe cleaner, you know, create something that represents how you're feeling today. What is it that you're checking in about? And they're making this pipe cleaner and you can see them doing it. So you can do your normal, you know, whatever therapeutic conversational piece that you're doing, checking in and talking, this little person, this my little person so far. Then I made, it only takes your regular couple of minutes to do your check-in. <laughs> Somewhat of a heart. I'm gonna say, here's my little pipe cleaner check-in because it's so nice to see so many familiar faces and so many new faces here on the call. Um, but then again, they can fidget with the pipe cleaners as we continue to talk. So that one's a fun one. Play-Doh also works just the same way. Um, you can make salt dough. So that's a great one to start off by having them make the salt dough um, while you're checking in and talking with them and then make something out of the salt dough that represents your anxiety right now. Make something out of the Play-Doh. The picture cards, there's all sorts of fun picture cards. Typically what we do with these picture cards is we lay them out, right, and have them pick one. Well, that's a little tricky virtually. So you kind of flip flop it around and you take one of the picture cards and you put it up there and say, based on this picture card, how does this picture card relate to how you're feeling right now? So I randomly pick one and you flip the question around. If you still want to do the traditional mode of like picking a picture, have them go to um, Google Images and select a picture that represents how you're feeling today. And then they can share their screen as well. Um, or on your phone, look through a picture on your phone. You can make it front loaded and directed. Uh, show me a picture on the phone that makes you smile right now. And then they show me that picture and then we can talk about it. All of those are super traditional things that we already do. Um, I love the music one too, pick a song. They can either play it through their iTunes or on their phone. Pick a song that represents your experience this week. Oh my gosh, I have gotten the funniest songs that people have selected, like Don't Touch This and all sorts of things that represent how we've been feeling this week. All right, so I'm gonna pause now because if we have a group, one of the things that we can do in Zoom is do breakout rooms. So I'm gonna break you out into rooms. You'll get a little join now. And the invitation is maybe try one of those check-ins. Have a conversation about what you're curious about so far and what might be limiting you. So I'm gonna put you into little breakout rooms. There you go.
Dr. Lung, sorry, I dropped out for a second and had to reconnect and then it put me back to you instead of in the group. Yes. Do you know what group you were in? Um, one of the older gentlemen and then a young lady. I know that doesn't really help. That's right. I'm just going to put you in a group. I'm okay, so perfect. sorry because I don't know everybody that is That's okay. in this. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> All right. Typically we don't have this big a group. There you go. And Gary, I see that you're not in a group, which is fine. Um, just know that it's going to be about three or four minutes. Hey, Mary, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I walked away from the computer for a second. I was trying to get them my materials, and then I came back and I didn't see anybody. Okay, um, so it should have had still you. going on? Yeah, it's, they're in the little breakout groups. So let me try to put you into a group um, and see. Okay, group two. Hold on one minute. <clears throat> okay, you should have a little message that you can join a group. Is it through the chat? I'm sorry, I'm messing this up. <laughs> no, um, if you're on a phone, it might be harder to see. Usually it's just a little pop up that says join. It's completely okay. It's only a couple of minutes. Sorry, I, I apologize. And, and how about you just check in with me a minute? So um, the question to the group was like, what are those you could they could do a check in if they wanted to do a check in. That was the invitation. But also what's curious to you already? Like, how has this already kind of sparked your curiosity and what might be limiting you? Um, honestly, what I thought I, I thought I was going to be watching and training. Um, You'll I be watching the rest of it. like this, and like uh, so, I was like looking for those materials. Um, so I'm still looking for this message. I'm, I feel <laughs> like I'm messing this up. I'm sorry. No, no, you're not messing up. And Lauren joined us too. A couple of people joined us late. I purposely did this at the beginning so that we would have space for. Well, first of all, just so people could see what the technology was like, but also space for people to join us late. And for the rest of it, you don't have to participate. Okay. Um, you can just watch it or you can participate because as we're doing experiential things like that invitation is to try to experience. Yeah, yeah, no. I you do not have to. You just, you just leave out. Just don't answer it. And that's completely fine. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So you said they were off in break-off groups. Do yeah. I go join those groups or do I like? Yeah, um, well, you, there's usually an invitation, but Sarah Grace, one, someone just asked me, so I'm gonna join a breakout group, so I'll come right back. What did you ask? Hey, you need to join in, Sarah Grace. <laughs> <laughs> we... Oops, I can't hear you very well. Yeah, she has connection problems. Okay, it's okay. If you have <laughs> we won't be doing a lot of breakouts, so we're going to come back to the group as a whole. Okay. Hey, Mark. Hi, Gary. Hey, what's going on? How's Not your phone? Oh, God. So did you join one of these, like, break-off groups? Yeah, and then I accidentally unjoined, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm not really sure how this is working. I don't know. I'm just going to listen. Yeah, I think same. But I think we're joined in now, so everybody's listening to us. Oh, hi. <laughs> This is weird. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna meet myself. Bye. So all the breakout rooms are closing right now. And once everyone is back, we'll move on with the activities. 
All right. Okay, so you're all muted now. <laughs> Just a reminder that if you unmute yourself and talk, everyone can hear you. Technically, I can um, prevent that, but I do want the space that if someone needs to say something, they can. So the breakout rooms can be a great way if you're working with a group to do like a pair share. Keep in mind that it does require a pretty stable internet. So some people experience that issue of um, not quite having a stable enough internet. All right, so now time for um, some activities. So i pull my little desk over here. Kind of like Martha Stewart. <laughs> One of the first activities that um, I did with some of the younger kids, so this is especially good for that you know, four to eight year old range, although you can do it with any range, but I like it for that. There's these little bowls and in the little bowls, so I invite people to get four little bowls and put four things of different texture. So this one has dirt in it, this one has coffee, this one has baking soda, and this one has sand. And then what I invite them to do is first just touch, just put their fingers in it, note the difference, and you can ask all sorts of questions which want texture feels the most comfortable to you. And then if they're a little bit older, what situation are you the most comfortable in? Which texture, the one I did with the adolescent, I'm like which texture reminds you of your mom? <laughs> and we had that conversation. You can do scents. So like one of my clients did coffee too. And she smelled it and I said, what does that scent remind you of? And she's like, it reminds me of having a cup of coffee with my abuela on the porch swing, and it was just so safe and comfortable. And then the next, the follow-up to that that we talked about was, how could you create that space for you in your world right now? And so she ended up ordering a swing that she can hang a hammock swing, and she takes 10 minutes and has coffee out on her porch on a hammock swing now. The sensory one is super fun to try out. Another sensory one for adults is tea. So invite them, again, do not encourage people to go to a store, just what they have at home. But if they have a variety of teas, make a different tea, or if they prefer coffee, you can get kinds of different coffees. This is a Cuban coffee. Sip your tea. First of all, it's just nice having tea with each other and that mindfulness and holding that cup and then noticing like which flavor what is how does your body responding to that what do you feel about that flavor what are you noticing about that flavor or if that flavor was disgusting or awful someone tried one like oh that was terrible like yeah what is something that is just kind of that icky taste in your mouth that you have to do right now that you didn't have to do two weeks ago so again the same kind of metaphors super fun to share that cup of tea or cup of coffee with each other a variety of flavors For those of you who join late i will be sending out a list of these activities by the way so you will have them um, with some brief instructions one of our favorite activities that we've done in pairs is that activity with legos so most kids have legos the whole beginning part of this challenge, though, is to make sure that you have the same Legos. So we do spend a little bit of time, like, do you have this blue Lego that has, you know, a six count? Do you have this white Lego? That's sorting and following directions. That in itself for little kids is frustration tolerance. Then I put the, the Legos on my desk. I might cover them up. I create a structure out of my Legos, an old traditional thing that they cannot see then trying to use only verbal directions. Using only verbal directions, I tell them to pick up the blue Lego, put that at the bottom, so that when we finish, we hold up our structures and see how close did we get to each other. After we've done this once, and they're like, how frustrating was it to follow adult directions? What was that like, communication? We switch it around, so we start over. They create a structure. Once they have a structure, I try to follow them. And this last time that I did it yesterday, my nine-year-old client was like, yeah, you're pretty much like my mom. She says, yeah, yeah, I understand. And then you have nothing like what I just told you about. 
So we ended up having this really great conversation about how he just feels like adults around him don't understand. That one, that activity does take a little bit of time. If you're also working with frustration tolerance, that can work with frustration tolerance, you might want to start off with like three or four Legos. I found that I tend to like to work with about six or seven Legos, not much more than that. Um, you can also uh, do that with different kinds of, of things too. It doesn't have to be Legos. You can do it with Play-Doh or some other kind of building structure, but it is a little bit harder to do with that. So one of my other favorite activities that I like to do, huh, you can test this one out if you can see me. This is a six count. So first of all, if you shake off your arms, you're just going to count to six. Super easy. With your right arm, it goes straight up one, then straight down two, and straight up three, straight down four, straight up five, down six. Okay, let's try that together. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. I have to say, it's super fun. I have this gallery view, and I see like 20 of you trying this. Okay, your left hand is a little bit different. It goes one, two, straight out to the side, three down to the bottom, four, five, six. Okay, try those two together. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. What? Of course, it's almost impossible to get right away. So we can practice that. Or what do we need to be able to learn it? Most people have a hard time learning something like that face to face in the mirror. So usually I have to stand up and turn the other way so that I'm moving my arm at the same direction that they are. Sometimes I switch it around and have me follow them. It really only takes five or six minutes to become proficient at that six count. But again, great for communication, following directions, frustration tolerance. Speaking about some frustration, balloons. Can most parents have balloons? Kids have balloons. Don't do something that they need to go out for. But if they have a balloon, have them think about what's something that they're anxious about right now. They might share it with you or not. They've got that. Put some air in the balloon. Put something else that they're worried about. Something else that they're worried about. Until the balloon is full. Now you can do this virtually too. I can blow up the balloon for you while you're talking to me. But it is a lot better when you get to let go of your balloon. So I'm like, okay, take a breath in. Breath out. For this moment today, are you ready to let go of that anxiety? You say yes. I'm like, okay, on the count of three, you're going to let go of the balloon. One, two. <laughs> they love that. Sometimes we have to do that more than once. It also works with, with anger, too. While we have the balloon in hand, another one that you can do is have them take a piece of paper. Just cut little slips of the paper. And I usually like to try to do five or six. What are five or six things that you know about yourself? So characteristics or um, five or six things, times in the past where you've had to deal with something that was difficult. And just make that note. So you make five or six of those papers. You roll them up. You put them in your balloon. And they could be sharing them with you as they're writing them up. I do try to mix that with both characteristics and experience, things that we've had before, times before where they've been really anxious or times before that they've figured out how to problem solve. Once you have that in your balloon, blow your balloon up. What you notice, tie your balloon off. All of these things are inside of you. This is you right now. If you shake it, all of these things are already inside of you. So once you have that metaphor, you can do things like try an alphabet count where you don't hit the balloon twice in one row, but you get through the whole alphabet, A, B. Or if they do that, let me move my desk for a moment. 
try doing tricks like up and turning around and then catching it again without spotting. Have them create some tricks. What are some tricks that you can do? Um, throw up the balloon in the air, clap twice, catch the balloon again. So those are some fun balloon tricks, even um, without putting the, the items in the middle. So speaking of that paper, if you have paper, go ahead and take one of your pieces of paper, you fold it in half if you have your scissors, cut a hole out the middle. This is some basic problem solving. See if you can put yourself through that hole. Looks like this. See if you can put yourself through that hole. Whew. Most of us will cause it to rip just like that. You know, we could talk about some of the stressors, some of the limitations that we're feeling right now. Here where I live, restaurants are closed, parks are closed, beaches are closed. There's so many limitations. What do I need to learn differently so that I can have enough space to move around in my really space limited way? So then you take another piece of paper or that inside part of the paper, I just reuse it. You fold it in half, start your cutting on the folded side, cut back and forth. Remember you'll have the directions. You open up slightly if you're trying it out. I see some of you trying it out. Cut the fold right in the middle, not the very first one. You just cut the folds after you've gone back and forth. The same piece of paper, actually a slightly smaller piece of paper because I use the part in the middle. Suddenly I have enough room that I could put myself through that piece of paper. So again, an, a nice, easy activity about, but also thinking about how do we adjust? How can we move some things around? So with that in mind, hmm, where should we go next? All right, for those of you who have a piece of paper, take a piece of paper, something to draw with. When I say go, go ahead and draw a squiggle. So it should be a squiggle, something around like this. One, two, three, go. Make your squiggle, just squiggle, squiggle, squiggle on your paper and stop. Now, take a look at your squiggle and make it into something. Make it into something. You can change colors if you want or you can keep the same color or um, add to it. So you're already starting off with something messy, kind of like how our life is right now. And with just a little bit, you can make a little bit of sense in your world. So you take a look at what I made my squiggly into. See the kind of little pelican it turned into? Oh, I love that people are starting to put up some of their pictures. If you made one, you can put in your video for feed for some of us to see. So that is just a simple squiggle drawing. Um, another one with a piece of paper. So origami, frustration tolerance. Anything with origami is, is really um, great for working with frustration tolerance. I like doing cups. So you start off with a regular piece of paper. And the first thing you need to do is fold it into that triangle. For those of you that are following along, you just fold that into a triangle. You fold this little lip down so that you really have a triangle. I open mine completely back up. Fold that little half part down. Back into my triangle. The triangle has the open part at the top. You take one of these sides and fold it over to that other side. One pointy side, fold it over. Take the other pointy side, fold it the other direction. Other pointy side, the other direction. And then at the top, you split your top apart, flip down one side, flip down the other side. So you fold down one side. Fold down the other side, open it up, and you have your paper cup. You can easily get directions for how to make a paper cup, but you can see how fast that was made. 
yep, you can drink out of it, but what I like to do is have people either write on the inside or those little sips of paper what fills your cup up so that later they can pull those slips of paper out when they're feeling stressed or worried about what is filling a cup up. Or we started one um, with one of my clients a couple of days ago. They have the empty cup and they're gonna add pieces of paper of things that filled their cup up during the week. So next week our check-in is they're gonna share everything that they put inside their cup from the week that we filled up. So origami. Um, another one that's related to that somatic piece is chewing gum. So if you liked the balloon one, when they're mad or frustrated about something, have them put a piece of gum in their mouth and chew it. They're still feeling that mad, put another piece of gum in their mouth, keep chewing, still feeling that mad. Usually like for the little kids, it's four or five or six pieces of gum. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> when they start giggling and laughing, you can see that they're not feeling that anger or frustration anymore, and you could spit it out ready to let go of that anger, spit that gum out. Super easy one to do as well. Um, some of our familiar ones that we do, you can still do online, like the perspective circle. Some of you might remember this one. Just take your index finger, point it at the ceiling, move it in a clockwise circle on the ceiling. Whatever you think is clockwise is fine. Move it about head high, move it about waist high, look at your circle, it should be going counterclockwise. See some of you who are already trying it again, they're like, wait, what? Yes, the circle has not changed. Your perspective on it has changed. You're looking at it from underneath versus above. So yesterday when I used this one, like COVID-19 is there. <laughs> Our perspective about this experience might be a little bit different. Our perspective can change. So that perspective circle is helpful. Typically, I follow that one up by, you know, fold your arms, notice which one is on top, take the other one, flip it around so the other one is on top. No cheating on that and like just laying it, like if you've tucked it in, you want to tuck it in the other way. And it feels slightly awkward, right? So even doing our normal things feels slightly awkward. Another version is when you fold your hands and you have a thumb on top and switch thumbs. Also feels super weird. Not scary just a little bit weird, just a little bit off. So that's that physical share. If you brought a hand towel, now is your time for your hand towel. Woohoo! Lay your hand towel on the floor. Stand up on your hand towel. I'm gonna point it down for a moment so that you can see my feet, yep. So I start off with a hand towel because I think it's a little bit easier. Your job is to get the hand towel completely flipped over. So I usually start off with the tag side up so you can see. Completely flipped over without falling over and without touching the floor. So if you're watching me, I am giving you a little bit of hint of how to do this. Obviously, a hand towel is super easy to do. But once you finish the hand towel, then you invite people to do a washcloth. So this is that turning over the new leaf. You generally have done that with um, tarps before or something a little bit bigger. Start off with a hand towel. If that challenge, some, some of you are still trying it out, which is great. If that challenge was the right amount of challenge, perfect. If it was super easy because like I've done it a hundred times, a washcloth is a little bit harder to do. So as you can see, some of these are even our traditional, um, our traditional adventure activities that we do. So another one, let's see. Oh my gosh, I have so many on our list. And we have a little more than 15 minutes left. Hmm, okay, so. Another fun one that I like to do at, at the house, and it's just a practicing one, is I beg to differ. And you just grab any random item. I'm looking for a random item that I have. Okay, so we'll say this random item. It's really like one of those coffee things. And it's practicing disagreeing with each other, but it's also practicing creative thinking. So then the other person would have to say, like, I beg to differ. That is really the solution that they use on elephant's eyelashes when they get too dusty from after they walk out. And I say, no, 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 I beg to differ. 
this is really dust from the moon that came back on that first space landing. And then they're like, no, 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 I beg to differ. And I love that part about how can we have a conflict and still be able to have fun and talk about it in that easy way. And then of course the conversation tends to go into who can you have conflicts about? Who can you disagree with? Who is it hard to disagree with? So for my client yesterday, the, the one that we were talking about, the Legos, he's like, oh yeah, you can't disagree with my mom. You just have to say yes, right. And then he even said like, I just stopped thinking about it. I just wait until she stops talking and I say, okay, I'll do that. So I, he goes, I don't even know what the last thing it was that she was telling me about. So this practice of being able to disagree with me, like that was his highlight from yesterday. It's like, it was just really nice to disagree with an adult. The same kid we were also talking about, kind of the impact of everything that was happening. So you take a piece of paper again, crumple up your piece of paper. We were actually talking about, um, bullying but making fun of each other so his hit siblings you know they're getting a little close in quarters right so they're making fun of each other so I had a couple of a piece of paper and then open up your piece of paper and then flatten it out as much as possible you even notice that mine even has like a little tear in it but you could see there is no way that I could get back to the flattened of my original paper. So when we say hurtful things to each other, there's still this leftover. So then on this leftover piece of paper, um, he actually wrote an apology note to his sister, but we use that piece of paper. I've also done it where we can draw a scene or a scenario. So the other time I did it, we were talking about the impact. Like there's no way that COVID-19 is not gonna impact us right now. So then I had them draw a picture of their house and their school, because that's what we were talking about on the piece of crumpled paper, recognizing that both exist right now. Both exist. <coughs> so that's another one. And let's see here. Oh, so, so change three things is a fun one to do. Change three things about the way that you look. And you can, have, you can have people like shut the screen off so you can shut your video off, change three things about the way that you look, and then turn the video on and see if you can guess what they are. Turn the video back off, change five more things about the way that you look. So you have a total of eight things. Please keep this appropriate. Remember this is being recorded or whatever it is, like we're on screen. Change five more things about the way you look, turn the video on, see if you can figure it out. Turn it off, change 10 more things. So we have a 20 thing that we're changing. So not only is this problem solving, it's also stress. And how many things have we had to change in our world right now to figure out our daily lives? A lot. So that one has been a great activity to both talk about all the things that are changing, how do they respond and change. My client this morning, when I did the change 10 things, she turned the video off and she turned the video back on and I'm trying to figure it out. She's like, yeah, I didn't change the other 10 things. I just couldn't do anymore. I just stopped. And that was the point that we ended up really talking about, like, where was her limit? Where are we really stopping at some of those things? So a few more. So another one um, that you can do with little kids is a virtual dance party. <laughs> Put music on, play, have a virtual dance party. What the, the five to eight year old range really love is show your signature dance move. So the five year old, he's almost six that I was working with um, last week, he had six signature dance moves by the end. And then with the signature dance moves, I would say like, what is this most used for? Which signature dance move would you use if you're feeling scared? Which signature dance move would you move if, use if you're feeling angry? Which signature dance move would you use when you're feeling happy? And so we were just playing with that. We could absolutely do that part online. Um, rock, paper, scissors. Okay, fine, we can do it in a regular version. But rock, paper, scissors, giant version is also a great way to do that. And because you're doing it at the same time, again, fun to do and play um, and you can either make it where you're practicing, what is it like to lose? What, how is that like? You're keeping score. Or whoever wins gets to ask a question. 
I do limit the questions about ask a question of how you deal with, you know, whatever. So you can give it a topic, um, but I find that that can be a fun one to do too. So juggling is one that I frequently use for frustration tolerance. So if you've got your three tossables, you can do three balled up socks. I happen to have couche balls handling around. Um, or bandanas move a little bit slower. Um, washcloths, you can um, pretty much anything. You don't want something that moves too fast if they've never juggled before, like a tennis ball. So I start off just with one. Put one in one hand. You want to toss it up slightly above your head and catch. And then I have them do that 10 times. And once they can do that without dropping it 10 times, you switch to your other hand. Yep, right above your head, just a little bit above your head. And then once they can do that, um, toss it from one hand to the other. Your eight, goal is to toss it about the same height from hand to hand. All right, and then you add the second one in. So here's the tricky part about the second one. You toss the first one up when it's up in the air is when you toss the second one. So it's a nice pattern. One, two, catch, catch. One, two, catch, catch. One, two, catch, catch. You might also be noticing that this is rhythmic and repetitive. By the way, if you just said that you couldn't juggle and you're trying this out, as soon as you have two that you're doing this way, you now can juggle. You can just only juggle two things. One, two, catch, catch. When you can do that 10 times in a row, then you can add the third one. And basically you're just doing the same thing, but you start off the tossing with the one that you have two in one hand, because it would make sense to start off the other way. You just do one, two, three, catch, catch, catch. One, two, three, catch, catch, catch. Once you get that pattern, typically once I have the three pattern, then I just have them keep going because usually you're um, better with one hand than the other hand. So then you just want to keep juggling those three. So for some of you, you just learned how to juggle. Phew, so many ideas, so many ideas. So in our last 10 minutes. We're going to do five minutes. I'm going to put you back into gr breakout groups and just what is standing out for you? What has sparked your curiosity or thought? There might be some other activities and then we'll come back and I'll have a couple of closing activities. What do you do at the end of a session? So if you're struggling with your breakout rooms, just don't join. That's okay. If you weren't struggling in your breakout rooms, join one of the breakout rooms and I will recreate them. Here you go. Trying to unmute you.
As the breakout rooms are closing. I did a mistake. I, I wanted to share something and I put to the leave the meeting room. <laughs> <laughs> what did you want to share? Uh, um, we were trying the whiteboard and there's okay. a whiteboard in there. <laughs> And yeah to, to do it and then just... <laughs> it's all right they're it's closing they're all jumping out yeah i tell mary that i was trying to to share the whiteboard and then i, I went out from the from the break room by mistake <laughs> i didn't want to leave so early <laughs> so so in a small group it's easy to put people just back into a breakout room we can do that Okay, so for our last couple of minutes, we got a couple of things. One of the favorites for those of us who do more traditional adventure therapy has been our little virtual campfire. And with our virtual campfire, you see the little candle. I have a little mini marshmallow that I can cook to make my little mini s'more. And while we're cooking, so the cooking of the marshmallow takes a little bit, which is nice, not very long if you use the mini ones, but it's a nice five minute closing. You make a little mini marshmallow as we're cooking it together. Then my client, I usually ask my client, like, what stood out for them today? What's that sweet spot? And then we can eat a little some more. Yum. The other thing um, that I do, the so clients have been working with me, they might have um flash paper but i really love flash paper and it's a magic paper that you can get most people won't have this at home but it is a, a a great thing to have with you so i ask them to write what's one thing that they're ready to let go of and i write on a tiny piece of flash paper and then watch it's gone that's called flash paper so phew our time went by today. Just so you know, we went through 35 activities that you can do virtually. And as I was looking at my list, I counted at least 20 more activities. So if people are interested, I might offer another one. I will send out the instructions for these activities. If you want to mute yourself to say goodbye to everybody before I close the meeting, I will. Thank you all so much for being here with me today. And I look forward to seeing you online again soon. <laughs> Bye. Nice to see you. Bye, Amanda. Oh, I'm seeing some familiar faces. Hey, Bobby. Hi, Maury. Bye, guys. Thanks, Maury, for putting this together, Thanks. Thanks. Hey, Fred. Thanks, Thanks Maury. What's up, Bobby? Bye, yes. Bye. Bye. Thanks a bunch. Bye. Bye, Tan. I know it's fun to see like these names going by. Oh, hey, Morgan. Tuesday, Tuesday, thank you for your help this morning. Please, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hi. Oh, hey, Liz. Hi, Mari. <laughs> Hi, Tan. How are you? Good. Bye, Mari. Thank you. Bye, Nick. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks, Mari. Liz, I'm going to send you an invitation right now. Okay. Awesome. For what, Mom? I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> nice to talk to you, Bobby. Thank you so much, Maury. You're welcome. Bye. Bye, Maury. Thanks so much. I'm re-inspired. Are you? <laughs> yeah. Wait, how much people are there still left? How much people? You. I'm gonna. I'm gonna close. There was a <laughs> lot. A lot of people. <laughs> Yeah, that was, that I thought was going to be about 10. <laughs> Have a great day. Okay, bye. Bye, everybody.